Here I'm going to show you how to convert measurements in Excel. So gallon to liter, Fahrenheit to Celsius, pound to kilogram, and vice versa. There are so many options and the function to do this is so easy. So after I show you how to use it, which isn't that difficult, although there are a number of caveats, then I'm going to show you some more interesting ways to use it. So let's say that we have a table in miles and we want to use a VLOOKUP and have the result returned in kilometers. Or let's say that we have a table that has a mix of measurements, but we only want kilometers returned, and we want it done in a nice, neat little way like this. So we'll start simple and build from there. Now let me clear this out and let's get started. And of course, don't forget to download the file, subscribe, hit the like button, and comment. Well, let's start this off with gallons to liters. So how many liters is one gallon equals convert? And we only have three arguments, the number argument from unit and to unit. So hard code a number or select a cell with a number and comma. This is, well, not all, but many of the units from which we can convert. So it makes it pretty easy for us to select an item, although there are a great many. So let's go down and find gallon. Uh, there you are. Double click then comma, and maybe the best feature of this function, it shows you everything that it can convert it into. So that makes it very easy to avoid mistakes, or easier. And we can double click a liter, and that's all there is for the convert function. Close it up, hit enter, and there we go. One gallon is 3.7854 and so on liters. And of course we can combine this with a round function, or well, one of the round functions, there are many of them, and get a nice little number like that if we'd like. But this is the very simple, easy, nice way to use the convert function. Now let's talk about some of the caveats and some of the things that you have to watch out for. So let's say that we're going from 80 degrees Fahrenheit to whatever that is in Celsius. So we use the convert function equals convert from this and what's the unit? Well, we can go down and find Fahrenheit, or if you use it enough, you will remember. It's just capital F, comma, and here's what we can convert it into. So let's go for Celsius, and notice that these are capitalized. So everything is good now, 26.66 degrees Celsius. But what happens if you remember it's an F and a C, but you do not capitalize it? So lowercase f, error. So you need to pay attention to capitalizations, and there are some of them that are particularly mm, goofy, tricky, interesting, and they'll have letters in the middle capitalized. If you use them enough, you can remember, but if you are using it for the first time, you do want to be careful. Like this one, horsepower, capital H, capital P, lowercase h, or horsepower hour. There are many interesting measurement units here. So make sure that you get your capitalizations correct. Let's back that up and everything will be happy. Now let's move on to the next thing that you need to pay attention to. And this one is pretty important. So let's say that we're going from pounds to kilograms. So we have 10 pounds. And what is that in kilograms? Equals convert. We select the number. Now the from unit. First off, you might not be used to how they refer to it, so LBM, pound mass avoroidupere. There's a lot of interesting words, which I do not know how to pronounce here. <laughs> but more important than that, than the wording, is what you do for things like kilograms. So we now have pounds in here, and then we go comma, and we're looking over here. Where is kilograms? I don't see it, but I do see a gram. And that brings us up to prefixes. So what is kilogram? It is 1,000 grams. It is a kilogram. What is a kilometer? It's a kilometer. It's 1,000 meters. So if you can just break up the word in your mind a little bit and think about it like that, it becomes a little bit easier. So we start off with grams. And then we add a prefix. And the prefix is what you would expect it to be in this case, a K. But what's kind of confusing is that it doesn't appear in this list, but it will still work. So when I hit enter, we get 4.53 kilos is 10 pounds. So when we're dealing with metric units, you need to add this to get certain measurements. 
And how many modifiers are there? A great many. Probably a lot that you've never heard of, unless you've done a lot with math. So let's take a look. This is from Microsoft's own documentation. I'll put a link to it in the description of this video, along with the link to my tutorial on teachexcel.com, where you can get the downloadable file for this tutorial. And we can see here lots of interesting ones, Yoda, Zeta, Exa, Peta. I'm definitely saying those wrong, but then we have ones that we kind of expect, like Kilo, and it is just a K. So we have a lot of these, and then we have these guys down here as well. So it's a good idea to check these out if you can't find the measurement that you're looking for, and then just put that modifier or that prefix in front of the measurement. And we're going to be doing that with kilometers in just a moment. Now let's go for bit to byte. One of my favorite little tricks for internet companies, how they used to convince you you were getting a really fast internet speed when it wasn't actually that fast. So how many bits is a byte? Equals convert this number. And what do we want to go from? I'm just going to type this guy in. Bit, comma, and we can go to byte or back to bit. I don't know why you'd want to go to the same measurement again, but there we go. Close it up, enter, and 10 bits is 1.25 bytes. Would have been good to use this function when they said you're getting 10 megabit internet, but they never actually said that. They just included, I believe, a capital B or a lowercase b, which meant bit instead of byte, and everyone thought it was byte. But that's a side note. <laughs> Now let's go for some table measurements. Here we have a table and all of the distances are in miles, but we want to return them in kilometers. And all you want to do first, just make your regular VLOOKUP. So we have our lookup value, our table array, and index number two, and false for an exact match. You always want to start with a lookup in this case to make sure that it is happy. And then we're just going to surround this guy with a nice little convert function. What is the number? The result of the VLOOKUP function. And we will go comma, mi for miles, comma, and of course we do not have kilometers. But what do we have? Meters. And how do we get a thousand meters? We just put a k in front of it. So k, m. Just like pounds to kilograms. Now we can close that guy up, hit enter, and our results will always be returned in kilometers. So uh, let us go down here to a more interesting example now. We have multiple measurements here, and we want to break this out so that we can return a V lookup as kilometers. Now I say break this out because that's how I'm going to show you how to do it. We're going to be adding helper columns, but I bet you could figure out one formula that could do it all right here. And if you do that, I'd love to see it in the comments for this video. But now let me show you a very easy, simple way to do it. And it's very easy to remember, so you don't have to work with formulas that are too long or anything like that. So we are going to have three helper columns. Let's call it helper one, two, and three. And for this table, let's say that we are always going to have a two-letter distance abbreviation. It may be different for your data set. But the point is, I always know the end will have two letters. And we could also use text to columns to do what I'm about to do, but formulas work as well. So helper column one, I want to get the number. Helper column two, I want to get the distance abbreviation. Then helper column three, we're going to get the result in the correct distance unit, and then have our VLOOKUP up here. For helper one, we want to get something from the left of the cell, so we use the left function, and we want to get it from this cell. Now, how many characters do we want to get from this? Well, we don't know, but we do know that we don't want the last two. So what we can do is to use the len function to count the number of characters in here, and then just subtract two. And when I hit enter, we get five, then we go down, 10, 20. Perfect. And helper column two is going to be a bit easier because we are going to be getting a value from the right of the cell, and we know how many characters we want. So equals right, the cell, and how many characters? Just two. Hit enter, and there we go. Kilometers, miles, and kilometers. Now all we do is figure out if it's kilometers or miles, and then if it's kilometers, we just output the value. If it's miles, we go ahead and use the convert function to turn it into kilometers. So we can use a very nice little if statement equals if uh, this equals 
km, then I can just output this guy, don't need anything else. But if it doesn't equal km, it'll equal miles, which means we use the convert function. What do we want to convert? Well, uh, this guy right here. And from miles to kilometers, close that up, close up the if, enter, and there we go. We have 5 and 16.09 and 20. But notice that these are not all number values. So we have 5 and 20 over here and 16.09 to the right. If you want to make sure that everything is a number value, we can go ahead and use the very easy number value function. Close that up, enter, and there we go. Now that we have that, all we do up here is a very simple VLOOKUP. So lookup value leg 2 and go like this and column index number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and false, close it up. And now, of course, how do we get it like I showed you in the introduction? Well, select these guys, go to the Home tab and make them white or you can hide the columns so that the user can't actually click and delete anything in them. There are many, many ways of for hiding data, and I love showing them, but this tutorial is not about that. But that's how you can use the convert function, and that's how you can break it out into helper columns and do all sorts of really interesting things with it. And that's all there is for this tutorial. Make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the little bell icon, and any other icons you need to hit. And if you have a question or a comment, make sure to leave it below this video so I can check it out.